Hello and welcome to my video today. I'm going to be testing the V2L adapter right here. And I am going to be using it with a kilowatt meter so I can tell the actual voltage and amperage and all that good information. I'm gonna be connecting it to an L1 EVSE. So I'm gonna be connecting it to the ocean for power and then I'm going to go to my Tesla Model 3 and I'm gonna plug it in and charge the car. The first test is I'm going to leave the car with the keys in my pocket. I'm gonna leave the car unlocked and I'm curious to see how long this will stay active for. So that's the first thing I'm gonna test out. In order to activate the V2L, I need to insert it into the charge port. One thing I found is I need to remove any of the DC caps that may be here. I'm going to insert it into the port. It will snap into place. I'm gonna take this off. Then I'm gonna attach my meter on here. Right now, everything is off. I need to activate it in the car. So let me do that first. Here we are on the main screen here. I have the energy screen up. I have the car in ready mode. And notice that you can't have both of these on at the same time. So you can either have the uh, charge port connected or the trunk. You can't have both. It locks it out if you have it connected to the charge port. So I am going to turn it on and I'm going to leave it with this 20% number for minimum state of charge. And let's see what it looks like out here. All right, so we have some information. I have the wattage on here. I can go through the different settings, functions here. Kilowatt hours, I am, let's see. Let me zero that out. I want this test to start at zero. So we have kilowatt hours, we have a voltage right here, amps. So let's, uh, let's keep this going right now. I'm gonna attach the EVSE. So the EVSE goes right here. EVSE shows power is connected. I'm gonna move this over a little bit so you can see it better. Now I'm going to bring it over to the Tesla All right, so port is open. I am going to insert the handle. So we have charging going on right now. It is set for five amps in the Tesla right now, and I'm gonna ramp it up and see how high I can get it to go. So right now it's at five amps. 581 watts, how many kilowatt hours have been used so far, voltage. Voltage is a little on the low side, 118 or so. All right, let me keep the amp screen on so you can watch that. Okay, I'm inside the Tesla right now. I have the charging set to five amps. I'm gonna increase it. Let me go up to seven. And it still shows it charging. Let me go outside. Still charging. We see the amps have increased on the meter.
Let's keep on going up. Let's go to nine. Still showing charging. We see the amps now are just under nine. Seems like it's still working. Let's keep on going. Let me go to 10. Ten. Ten seems to be working. Let's go to eleven. Still showing charging. We are just under eleven amps here. Technically, this is a NEMA 515 outlet, which provides up to 12 amps out of the 15 that's on the breaker. So the max that I can safely do is 12. So let's see if we can do the max. And we are maxed out at 12. And there we go. I see a amp level is 11.74. This is the highest you can go on the NEMA 515. If this was a NEMA 520, that would provide us a 20 amp breaker. And then we would have a max of 15 amps to be able to use net. But we don't have the connector on this adapter. so. We're limited to this 12 amps at the moment. So I'm going to continue the video and see how long this charges for. And I'm curious to see if there's a timeout for the car since it's just unlocked. I don't have anything, the key fobs in my pocket. So just curious to see how long this lasts. So I'll see you in a little bit. It has now been a full hour of charging. Let's check in on the Tesla here. And we have 55% state of charge. It is 12 out of 15 amps, and it's still around 117 to 118 volts. It's added one kilowatt hour, which I'm estimating it's probably closer to 1.3 since it's been charging for one hour. If we look at the charge port, still good. Let's go to the oceans screen here and let's press some numbers. So we're still at 11.74. Here, let me move this a little easier to see. We're at 11.74 amps, 1392 watts of, as a high. It's provided 1.4 kilowatt hours. So one hour and it is still going. And this is nothing special that I've done. I've just left the car unlocked, key fob in my pocket. Let's go inside and see if it's turned off. And we got same information here. And we did hit stop. So let's see what it says out here.
Yep, so it did stop. By pressing the brake, I stopped the charging process. As you can see right here, it's now off. So you can either turn it off on the screen here, or you can hit the brake and that will stop it. So that's good to know that it can run on at least an hour while the car is unlocked. So it looks like we need to take it out and put it back in if we want to start it up again. So I reattached it. And if I want to recharge uh, again, I just need to press the on button like that. It seems that the uh, V2L percentage resets every time. So if I had it set for 20, it reset to 10. FYI. So let's see if there's any difference if I have the car locked. So yep, it is charging again. So let me lock the car and see if it makes any difference. All right, my second test of charging with the charge port V2L adapter here. And I have the car locked and it is still charging away. So you can either have the car locked or unlocked. It doesn't make a difference. And you can get at least one hour of charging and possibly more. So I think that's great news for anybody who wants to use this V2L adapter, say when you're camping or other situations where you need the adapter attached to the car, the car can actually be locked and secure and you don't have to worry about anybody getting into it. Let me unlock the car now. So when I got in the car and pressed the brake pedal to wake up, it stopped the charging process, as you can see right here. So when you're done with charging using this EVSE, I just need to unplug it right here. And then I unplug, unplug this adapter and then this V2L adapter, I just press the button here at the top, pull it straight out, and then I can store it away. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.